We have the director and the writer, the wonderful Paul Thomas Anderson. Please talk to you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Hello, everybody. Oh, nice crowd. Well, this is really a, your sweetest movie, I would say. And it struck me watching it that it was a movie that not only was it made during COVID, but it, it's a COVID movie in, in, in a lot of senses. I was wondering if you had the, if you were thinking at all about the audience and what an audience who's been through COVID needs at this moment. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and the reason why I wasn't thinking that is because we were planning to shoot the film in uh, May. Mm -hmm. um, so it, when March rolled around, we discovered we weren't going to be making the film in May. You know, that the, the world had stopped for a second. And we picked back up in August. Um, so that was the first opportunity that we had. So the, the script was written, the shots were picked, everything had been in, put into place. Right. Um, but it did, of course, cross my mind as we reached the finish line of shooting the film and then went into the second lockdown, we were in the editing room and the joy that I had while working on it was getting me through this incredibly challenging time. It gave my family, who was in the editing room with me, incredible joy getting to this time. And I can remember a moment of feeling like, I just want to share this. I just want to share this right now. Um, to the point of, of like crazy thoughts in the middle of the night, like, well, fuck it, let's just put it out somehow. We weren't even done with the movie. We were like halfway done. And I was just anxious to share it. And as I see it emerging now, we did finish it properly. And I see the way people are responding to it. Um, I feel like we just got quite lucky that we made a film that has you know, that is joyful and, and open. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a movie that we kind of need right now. Yeah. Um, but it's really a friends and family movie. I mean, everybody, you know, you have long-standing relationships. I don't know if the audience understands that you had made many music <coughs> videos with the, with the Haim. The Haim sisters, the Haim yes. Sisters. Um, my relationship with Alana go well, it's complicated. Actually, it's not complicated at all. It's quite simple. Their mother was my um, elementary art school teacher. She taught, um, when I was seven or eight years old, she taught me how to paint. And I remember her incredibly well. Um, I kept paintings that I made with her over 40, year, 40 plus years. And she always, I, she was like a vision. I went to school, where I went to school, there was always sort of like, very, very stubborn old teachers. Um, and she was, this, she looked like Alana. She had this beautiful long hair. And she made quite an impression on me. Flash forward 40 something years, and I heard this band on the radio <laughs> named Haim. And the more I listened to this music, the more I felt this incredible connection to it. I discovered they were from the San Fernando Valley. That's where I'm from. Oh, that's what a connection. We had a mutual friend in common. I reached out to that mutual friend. I said, There's, can I meet these girls? I'd love to talk to them. And they came over to our home and they said, you know, our mom was, was your art teacher. I said, who's your mom? They said, Donna Rose. And I nearly fell out of my chair. I went into my son's room. I found a painting that I painted with her mom. I, I said, this is, this, your mom taught me how to do this. Wow. So I have an incredible connection. Our families are deeply intertwined. And I then worked with the band and shot music videos for them. And, Many of the music videos that we did was really an inspiration for this movie because we worked, we would always have no money, we'd have no time, and we'd always just sort of think, well, we'll get no money and no time. Should we do it? Well, let's just run around the streets and we'll do something and we'll put it to music. And that kind of ended up being the, the flavor and the feeling that I had of doing this work with them it was so contagious mm. that, it, that it, it fed the script and fed the process of how we made the movie yeah. too. Yeah. We, how did you know that? I mean, she hadn't acted before. No. <laughs> I mean, were you? Did your gut tell you that she was a, that she was a performer? Her gut told me that she would be excellent. Her, my gut did not tell me that she would be psychotically great and, and like flow out of the screen. Um, it, 
I had worked enough with her that I saw that, that she really had a, a, a certain type of charisma, but more to the point that it was something that, 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 that she could act. I really felt very strongly about that. And when I would read the, it wouldn't be that surprising to you if you'd been there with me in the room and seen mm -hmm. her just read the script out loud yeah. and do it with me. I was like, this is this. If, if anything, I had to check myself to make sure that what I was seeing was accurate. And we've, a lot of us have worked together on the crew for like 20 years, and I would, I would really have like a system of checks and balances just to mm -hmm. make sure, you know. There's a long history of directors who like delusional when it comes to certain like female performers or something like that. <laughs> Is she really? I, she's like popping off of the screen in a way that I've never. I, 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 am I? Am I seeing this? And they're like, No, we see it too. She's really yeah. that good. Yeah. It was exciting to watch. Exciting to see somebody. And I think audiences, you know, there's something <coughs> wonderful when you see somebody on a movie screen that you've never seen before. Yeah. It's a really wonderful feeling. Yeah. Well, the movie's filled with with fresh faces. Yeah. Uh, I mean, did you did you test her with Cooper Hoffman to see? If that the chemistry was there? Well, kind of. You know, what I did initially was that I, I gave a lot of the part very quickly, and I said, well, now we have to go find a Gary. And we auditioned actors in a traditional way, young actors. Um, and nothing seemed quite right. Nothing nothing was, was you know, it just wasn't right. <clears throat> I suggested Cooper, who I've known since he was a baby, because he's Phil's son. and. Alana knew him a little bit because I'd introduced them and they'd, they'd spent some time together and all the Harm sisters thought that that's a really good idea, you should pursue that. And when the two of them got together and they read it together, it was, it was one of those, you know, kind of classic movie moment stories where you just think like, this is really good. They're really, really good together. Or they were really awkward actually when they first read it. It was not very good. It was kind of, but it was, it was so much to work with. Yeah. It was kind of the, the, just the right amount of good. Um, it, it was encouraging that there was something to do. And many of the actors that we had read with, it was it was all it was perfect, and it was that was kind of irritating. Like, well, this is this feels doesn't feel right, doesn't feel natural, and they connected to each other quite strongly. And we did it again the next day and the next day, and and then yes, we did do a traditional screen test. So it was one thing to sort of be alone in your room or with an iPhone or something like that, but we <coughs> okay, well let's do it with a real movie camera with real lights and. The first screen test that we did, we went to a deli in Tarzana, where I live, and we didn't close down the deli. We just sort of asked them to just give us a booth and let business go on, and so they could get a sense of life going on. and And it was a very, very successful screen test. They did really, really, really well. And then they kept. When we did another one, and uh, they did really, really well. And then we got to the first day of shooting, and they just like froze, like deers in the headlights, like. Which was great because it was the Bradley Cooper stuff that we did first, and then <laughs> 24 hours later they were fine, you know, and they, they got comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. That Bradley Cooper stuff is amazing. Yeah. Um, was that? I, I was curious as I was watching it when he does that Barbara Streisand, Barbara Streisand. <laughs> was that written that way, or was was he improvising at all? That is that is that is the one section of that scene that's improvised. Uh -huh. Um, kind of felt that. It, it's in, yeah, and it happened late in the day. Um, we'd actually shot the whole first half of the scene, which is scripted. They did that, and then we turned around. We waited to turn around to do the back half of it because the light was in the right position. So we kind of revisited the scene. <coughs> and they were very loose by that point. Bradley was very, very loose by that point, very confident. We'd already gotten the scene, really. And we just needed this one little shot, and that came out of it. Yeah. <laughs> and how does John Peters feel about this for <laughs> <laughs> John Peters is so happy yeah. to have finally been portrayed by Bradley Cooper. <laughs> you know, I think he was probably hoping that Brad Pitt might have played him, but, you know, but, but I think he's happy. Um, he sent me a note that he'd seen the film and he was, he was, he thought it was a very accurate depiction of himself. <laughs> <laughs> Or at least it helps the, the myth, you know, right, kind of right, continue right. on. Well, it's interesting. I mean, you, you toy with real people and almost real people. I mean, like the Sean Penn character's last name resembles a very famous actor who was in a lot of Toko Lee <laughs> movies. <laughs> yes. But you decided not to use his first name. Yeah, it's a very mm -hmm. schizophrenic sliding scale about where you make a decision about when to use um, a, re a real life a person and when not to. Um, William Holden is the basis of that character. 
mainly because of this film called Breezy that he made mm -hmm. with Kate Lenz and uh, Clint Eastwood directed it, and it was mm -hmm. this May December romance, and I sort of stole something from that. And I know William Holden was a sort of famous for his exploits in, in, in Africa and, and drinking, and yeah. he's one of my favorite, favorite actors, but I also didn't want to ask Sean to do a wholesale William Holden impression or something right, like this. Right. Um, I think you, you, you kind of navigate that in case by case, like m Lucille Ball is Lucille Doolittle, you know, it's just something that takes the curse off and you can kind of, you don't, you don't, you're not chained to an impression or a real life person. That you that you don't have to um, well you don't have to be as respectful I suppose yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. and the, and your your main character Gary is I gather actually based on somebody well that's named right Gary, right that's right my but by the way that that that's what I was going to say but Gary Getzman is uh, he works with Tom Hanks he's his producing partner now but but back up many many years before that he was Jonathan Demi's producing partner. Um, he actually met Jonathan Demme when Jonathan Demme was working in PR at UA. And they met backstage at the Ed Sullivan show where Gary went to promote Yours, Mine, and Ours as sort of depicted in the movie. We fudged the details a little bit. But um, Gary, Gary's, Gary, Gary was a child actor in the San Fernando Valley. His mother worked in PR. They took care of the Macago restaurant. They took care of Cal the Cock. They did all this kind of stuff. And Gary <coughs> was going to go to New York to promote uh, Yours, Mine, and Ours, and he needed a chaperone because his mom couldn't go. So he found a burlesque dancer named Kiki Page who lived in his neighborhood. So this is like this 40-year-old burlesque dancer to chaperone a 16-year-old Gary Getzman to New York. Um, and I heard that story, and I was I was hooked. Like, that's a really 